Buffalo Police, what is being done to bridge the gap between Buffalo Police Department and our union? The unit that we are part of, the neighborhood engagement team, one of the things that we mainly focus on doing is basically collaborating and being part of programs where the youth are part of. And this is one of the ways that we try to basically close that gap that exists between the community and the Buffalo Police Department. Would you mind even for myself giving a couple examples of what some of the neighborhood engagement team youth programs have been so far? Like this past Sunday, uh, we went to the Friends, Friends of the Night uh, with the Buffalo Police Explorers, which is a program that we have for the youth. The program basically helps them to if, encourage them and teaches them like how becoming a police uh, a police officer is and like what the process is like. And when you take an actual police exam, the city of Buffalo just had a previous exam in June. From the time you get your approximate score, the training that you have to go through is approximately six months. Uh, if your score is high enough to be selected, you enter into the training program that's located at the Erie County Police Academy. And, and as I said, again, you are trained in numerous things at driving, uh, defensive tactics, physical education, as far as PT, keep yourself in shape, as far as the laws, also there's EMT. So there's a lot of courses to which all of you can do, and all of you have the ability, and we encourage and are welcoming, welcoming to all of you. One thing that we look at a lot um, is not just, of course, your personal views on how are you doing, are you doing the best job as a police officer, but also how do police departments measure how officers are doing themselves. Um, you know, across the country, there's a push to say, let's not just focus on the number of arrests. And we know these officers here, since they're on the neighborhood engagement team or they're community police officers, that's not all you're focusing on. Um, but Buffalo Police Department, last calendar year, still made about 5,400 misdemeanor arrests. That's the lowest level of charges. Um, so we have been very encouraged that Commissioner Lockwood and many officers have been saying the real focus should be on community policing, but also to reward officers, to offer promotions to officers who do community policing well. So again, rather than just saying, how many arrests did you make this month? Look at how many community meetings did you attend? How often did you do foot and bike patrols and really talk to young people and talk to folks out there too? How can you make our youth so that they can trust the Buffalo Police? Um, of course, there's bad apples, there's bad apples in every job you're in. But it's all we can do is go out each day and try to prove to you that that's what we're here for. We're here for the community, we're here to serve you, we're here to try to protect you and do our job to the best of our ability. I don't, I don't know what your interaction or your personal story is, but you have to, you have to put it out, put that, that challenge out to us to allow yourself to trust us. But if you just come into the relationship with the fact that you don't trust us, then that's not fair to us, and it's very hard to change your mindset. Well, my view is a little different. Uh, probably because I worked a little bit longer in this capacity. I believe how we gauge the level of trust and how we get young people is by our actions. Unfortunately, and it may not be us, and it might not have been through our lifetime generation, but there have been some things done that individuals do not trust the police. And as I stated earlier, I come from some of those communities. So as we go forward and look to bridge that gap, with individuals, the acknowledgement that there are some issues. So once we acknowledge that and open it up to you, what can we do? How can we help? As Officer Coco said, what do you need from us? We're out, we're engaging in sports programs, mentoring programs, big brother, big sister. We're traveling everywhere. We're going in businesses. We're doing bike, uh, as she said, we're doing foot patrols, we're doing bikes because we want you to see us, we want to stop and say hello with the understanding that we are people too. I've coached high school football, college football, youth football, basketball, track, had many, 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 many mentoring programs. We have advocacy programs, we have a tie-in to the Northland Workforce Development Program where we go out 
and they ask and talk to the young men on the corner, how can we help you? Direct you to GED programs. When we care about your well-being and we care about you, you can see that trust factor begins to come. Um, there's a lot of people that know me outside of work. I don't mind taking my time outside of work. I get a lot of shocking faces and people say, oh, I didn't know you were a police officer. But that's all I do. That's all we do is build relationships. And that's our biggest focus. And to, to see us outside of uniform and interact with us is totally different when you see us in uniform. So my biggest thing is always giving time. The most effective is really engaging with the youth outside of this work. And what do you think needs to change in the community and in the police department? A reduction in fear, I think, is something that I think by um, acknowledging the way that the reasons why there is fear in the community and why there is mistrust, I think that that is a way of, um, of, of, of healing. And I think that real, genuine honesty and without um, any defensiveness, I think, is important as well. I believe, if I'm correct, that you folks kind of volunteered. I would like to be on that, or I would like to be a community police officer, is that right? Yeah. Um, so what we would like to see is, beyond the folks who volunteer for this community-based policing work, that all officers who are working at the district level would actually be required to spend even two hours a month doing community meeting, youth mentoring, a lot of folks do anyway, um, but we've been asking for a few years, require all officers to devote a certain number of hours per month to community policing activities. Um, I think on both sides, that helps community members get to know the officers in your district, and it also gets to help them to know you, what are you up against in your day-to-day -day life, what, are, what is it like for folks um, living in their district as well. I just want to take a moment and thank Youth Can and all the young leaders here for organizing this session tonight. I think it is um, a huge part of the answer to this question of what needs to change. How many people in here have a driver's license? Let me see the hands. Driver's license. How many people have ever been pulled over before? It's not fun, right? but it's part of our job and it's part of you guys being motorists. So, what we got going on right here is a typical four-door sedan, driven by Officer Spencer, and her co-pilot today is Officer Rogowski. Officer Cole and Officer Inglet are gonna pull them over. The girls are going to use quotes and actions that they have seen themselves. Nothing you are about to see here is made up. These experiences have been witnessed firsthand by members of the Buffalo Police Department, many of us from our own notes right here and now, okay? In a few minutes, when they get done, we've got two volunteers who are going to teach us the right way and gonna be good examples for all of us. Then we'll break it down as a group. We have one very important life lesson that we're gonna close with, and then we'll open up questions. And I'm going to open up with this, and I'm going to close with this. Everything that we do, meaning us as the police, is done for a reason. It may not be super apparent right now, but hopefully when we're done here, and you see the example, you'll realize that we don't ask you the silly questions, and we don't make you do silly things just because we want to, or just because it's fun. It's because stuff has to be done. Hi, ma'am. How are you today? Officer Cole of Buffalo Police Department, could you do me a favor? Hello, hello, hello. hello. Ma'am, ma'am, could you do me a favor? Can you get oh. off the phone? Hold on, Mom. What? Right, you know why I'm pulling you over? For what? You have a burned out headlight. Listen, I don't know about you. Also, ma'am, you were wearing your seatbelt. Why are you keep saying that? Why are you pulling me over? Why are you pulling me over? Why are you pulling me over? Though? I'm pulling you over. I already explained that. You, you have a burned out headlight. Okay. I, I mean, I just got my car. Like, I'm not understanding why you, why okay. you bothering me. Your headlights burned out. That's my body. So okay. What do you mean? Registration. Oh my God. Like... Miss, 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 miss. Can you reach? Miss, miss. I'm getting it. You just okay. Asked me. You not get in your pocket. Can you keep your hands? No, hand I told you I got it right here. Okay. Thank like... you very much. Can I have a driver's license and registration? Please not turn on the Hello? Ma'am, license and registration, please. Okay. Ma'am, what the fuck? Ma'am, sit down in the 
the vehicle. Bitch, sit down in the vehicle. I'm not gonna answer again. Sit down in the vehicle. Same thing, no headlight. Action. Okay, so we've, we've turned on our lights now. We've turned on our lights. We've done everything we did in the same manner because we are creatures of habit and we do everything exactly the same. We try to do everything so muscle Hi, vibrates. Hi, sir, how are you today? Hello, kind of. I mean, Officer Cole of the Buffalo Police Department. Did you realize that you have a burned out headlight? I realized. You know that you have a burnout. I was going to get it fixed. Okay. You know, we had a little trouble. Okay. But, but, but you, 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 but what? I was going to get it fixed. Okay, you're going to get it fixed. Okay. All right, do me a favor. Give me your license and registration. I'm going to um, run your uh, license and registration. Everything checks out with that. You'll be on your way, okay? All right, thanks, sir. Go ahead and reach for that now. I'm reaching very slow. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be right back. So you don't have to keep your hands like that. Here's your license and registration bag. Uh, I might issue a ticket if you admit it to having a problem and then we're going to get it fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and let you get it fixed. Just be careful driving tonight. Go straight home and uh, get that fixed in the morning, okay? Thank you, sir. Have a good evening. All right, you too. <laughs> okay, police officers do everything we do for a reason, right? When we go home safe, it's better for you because when we're safe, you're safe, right? So, what you guys have in the back is the typical view of a police officer on a traffic stop, right? You're walking up, you're coming from behind the car. All right, I'm going to give Chelsea the soccer ball. She's got a water bottle. And I'm going to give you the football. All right, from where you're standing, what does Chelsea have in her hand? Well, what's your guess? What's the guess? That she's probably got a phone or she's playing with something. Okay. Anybody else guess? Alright, she's got a phone. Okay. Nice. Alright, Chelsea, pick something up. Yep, you know. What does Chelsea have in her hands, everyone? Yeah. Turn around, show everybody behind you. I know it's overly dramatic and we end that way on purpose. We opened up with, we tell you to do stuff, and we go through things in a procedure for a reason, all right? Our job is different every day. We meet different people every day. We meet different people who have different intentions every day. We have to treat everybody the same. So when you're on your way to church, or you're on your way to basketball practice, and you get pulled over, and we say, show me your hands, we do that for a reason. Because you guys have no idea what's going on up here, do you? Thank you very much. You're all great volunteers.